Welcome to the Future.Bible podcast, where you'll hear profiles of individuals and Bible-inspired organizations making a difference in the digital world. In each episode, we'll bring you stories of innovation, advancement, and real-life change. Are you ready? Let's get to today's episode. Hey friends, this is Kenny Jang, co-host of Future.Bible. I'm here with my co-host once again, DJ Chuang. Welcome to the show, DJ. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, It's been a while. We are back in the saddle in in front of the microphones. And today, DJ, we've got a a very interesting character here on the East Coast, Richard Scheip with us. Um, DJ, why don't you tell us a little bit of what you know about Richard and maybe transition into Richard giving us a fuller background. Scheip is a church planting pastor with a church called Harvest Bible Chapel in Ashburn, Virginia. And uh, he's one of our ministry partners of the uh, Dot Bible top level domain. And uh, he is church planting in the heart of the internet. 70% of the internet traffic goes through Ashburn, Virginia. Oh, that's a good fact to it. Uh, I never knew about that one. A little outside of Washington, DC. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and so perhaps uh, being strategic with his domain name is pretty meaningful in the midst of all that internet traffic. And so we're going to learn about how uh, he's planting a church in the middle of all that. And you know what? There's even a podcast that's happening out on the, uh, you know, on the popular web about church planting. So uh, Gimlet Media is doing a whole series on startups and church planting. So we're happy to have our version of church planting and the internet. So welcome to our podcast, Richard. Thank you for having me, guys. So why don't we start with just the basics, you know, the, like the back of the base car, baseball card stats. Tell us a little bit about you as a pastor and then your ministry as, as okay. you guys are flourishing there. Okay. Yeah. We, um, so I grew up in uh, Loudoun County is the, the name of the county that we're in in Ashburn in the western part, which is basically uh, right on the edge of the suburbs of Washington, D.C., um, in Virginia, so sort of northwest of, of the city. Uh, for a landmark for people who don't know the area, uh, Dulles Airport is, is real close to us as well. So right next to Ashburn is Dulles Airport. If you've flown through D.C., you've probably gone there. Um, and we uh, moved to Ashburn uh, in uh, April of last year and started the process of gathering people to try to launch this church. Um, I, uh, it was about, I think it was about that time, or maybe no, it was in the summer of last year that we got the harvest.bible domain name. And, uh, and then since then, we've been just gathering people uh, to, you know, other Christians who see the need, um, because Ashburn is, is one of the fastest growing areas in the country. Um, we've got a metro stop that's being built, uh, just real close in Ashburn, real close to where we live. Um, lots of extra density is going in around that. And within the next 10 years, another 100,000 people are slated to come just to this little area. On top of that, all the other people that have been here have already come. Uh, it's an extremely diverse area, um, Close to 50% of the people that live here were born uh, uh, outside the United States, um, but lots of lots of tech, um, lots of uh, government contracting, um, because it is an internet hub. You know, I can drive down the street and actually see the internet. Uh, it's just lots of big, you know, buildings that have no windows and high security all the way around them, <laughs> and. Uh, and those are, I mean, they, they cannot build them fast enough. I mean, they are just coming, going up everywhere. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, so it, it is a very high tech area. Um, it's, it's, it's more of the, I guess, the highly nerdy kind of, more of the backbone infrastructure, uh, networking kind of, kind of tech. Uh, we don't have the, the hip, cool tech guys like <laughs> you might have out West or I, I don't know where, but, but, um, uh, let's see. Uh, and so we, this past April, uh, April 15th, we had our very first worship service and, um, and it's been going pretty well so far. Um, we're still really small, uh, but slowly growing and, um, we are doing more of a public launch. Uh, so that was more of a soft launch, a pub- public launch at the end of August. 
And um, so that's kind of the summary of, of it. Yeah, Kenny is um, trying to teleport his thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I can't quite hear that. It's one of these, uh, it's the modern day problem of uh, video, right? Being yeah. uh, on a call. So one of, one of the things that we um, think about when we start a new organization or a church, et cetera, the first thing these days on the checklist obviously is our website and our website address. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you've adopted an actually uh, a unique URL using one of the brand new GTL these generic top level domain names that comes after the dot right not a dot com not a dot biz not a dot info uh, but a dot Bible and um, some of the things that come up when we talk with ministries thinking and considering about using a dot Bible URL is um, hesitation could you tell us a little bit about that process with you and then also uh, it's almost like you know um, a TV cooking show. The magic oven. You've got the before and then. Whoa, voila! You got the you know baked product instantly right. available. So, could you tell right. us a little bit about the after effects? Like, how has it been? Um, one of the major concerns I'll just flag out there is that people think that no one will be able to find them ever on the internet. That you'll be lost yeah. in space if you adopted one of these new GTLDs. Has that been the case with you guys? <laughs> Um, yeah, that, that wasn't really concerned. My, my main concern heading into it was just how do I present it in print material so that people recognize it? Like they know, cause when you see .com or .org, you know that you're looking at a web address, but you see .bible, it's like, what, what is, what is this? So we add www in front of it anytime we, we print it just to make it very clear. Um, but I, it's not been something that I've been super concerned about because of our area being very high tech. Um, also I mean, Google has the answer to pretty much any question you have. So, I, I you know, if, if anybody instantly wants to find us, they can find us super quick uh, just via a search engine. Um, so that that wasn't at all a concern. I, I was excited about, though, uh, the idea of, of putting the core of who we are and, you know, right in our, our domain. And um, uh, one of the things that, you know, we – an aspect of Ashburn is that it's fairly secular um, about only about 6% um, would describe themselves as evangelical um, and well over 60% I think mid 60% are, are, are basically in depth indifferent um, and then there's a lot of other faiths and, and um, I don't have the full breakdown in front of me but um, one, of, one of the purposes that I've taken is I, I don't think it's a good idea to shy away from fundamentally who you are. And, and in particular with the Bible, one of the things that I, I, I challenge people on is, is don't take the opinion of somebody else and make it your opinion. Um, you, in other words, the claims that we're making and the claims the Bible makes are so significant that you should read it yourself. Don't just take what, you know, your favorite uh, philosopher, atheist, whatever tells you about the Bible read it yourself. In fact, and I tell them, don't, and don't listen to what I say about it, you know, get, get, get the input of other people, but, but you need to read it yourself. And so it's, it's a pretty fundamental thing to who we are as a church. Um, and so we don't shy away from it, uh, in that regard. And we re we're really honest with people that, Hey, there's parts of it's are really hard and we're, we're not trying to <laughs> say that it's simple, um, or easy. It's, it's not a book that you can just pick up and read like, you know, a book on the New York Times bestseller list, but um, the same way, um, it, it, it's got to be kind of uh, explored. And um, so that's, that's one part of it uh, for us. That sounds... Um... Spiritual environment, what are some of the unique things that you're doing as a new church and wanting to uphold the truth of the Bible? Um, with these uh, nerdy techie people that probably have a very busy schedule. There's um, maybe not a lot of opportunity to do things in person. Yeah. Uh, are there also some things that you're doing online? Yeah. Um, I, I guess for us, it's, it's more relational. If, I, if I'm understanding your question there, um, DJ, uh, a, a lot of it's just much more relational for us. Um, it, it, it is a community that has a lot of families, uh, young families with kids. And I mean, they're, they're wrestling with what every family wrestles with in terms of the kids' schedules and, and busyness and dealing with all that. Um, so that, that's really much more of the approach that we take. 
along those lines. Um, we we're, we are starting with with our public launch in August. We're we're doing a um, a series in a in a marketing campaign and online stuff around uh, a, a series that we're calling Come Home. And uh, so rather than just saying, uh, "Hey, we're a church in the area that's new. You're welcome," we're 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 kind of skipping some steps and implying that it's time to come home and you're not home. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're, we're kind of hitting people. We're trying to be a little provocative in, in a, in a respectful way, but, but rather than just invitational, but just kind of like, Hey, you're not home. And, and deep down, you know, this, <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're, and we're going to follow a lot of Luke 15 and the story of the prodigal son. Um, so uh, you know, the first part is going to be come home rebel and then come home broken. Um, and then, so it's going to be targeted at particular, particular people, uh, that are, you know, saying because on the internet, people are always searching Yeah, and then they're searching for a home. And that's so true. Hey, that's good. Very much resonate with something. That's Kevin, Kenny, what does it provoke for you as he shared that? Yeah. I mean, I just love the entire story and what you guys are doing there. And, um, even just the soft launch aspect, I love, you know, looking at your website at um, harvest.bible, www.harvest.bible. Um, the fact that you are external focus, not internal focus, you have a, a plan your visit section, which is one of the things I advocate all the time. And at a, on a recent um, podcast that DJ and I was on another show, uh, one of the things that DJ kept on saying is, you know, where is your address? Where is your times? Where I want to visit your site. I want to visit you, and, and you're making it hard for me. And I think one of the things that um, you've done really well is translate digital into what we do offline in terms of being invitational, right? And um, I think that's something that we can't miss in this big picture and all the things yeah. that are happening, that it comes down to basics that we're just using – technology to scale personal relationships, right? You're just trying to invite people to a gathering and right. you're using the digital interwebs in that manner. And I love, okay. and I think you have these insights, these little things that are nuances that are hard to pick up from the big picture. But right. when you zoom in closely, that's the stuff that I'm seeing that you are picking up, okay. uh, Richard. That's good. I appreciate that, Kenny. And, that, and I think a, another thing along those lines that, that I, I, again, I don't, I don't know about, as much what's going on nationally um, or other parts of the country, but but I, I think that we are at the, on the cusp of a of a technology burnout in a sense. In in that there's a there's a longing not not that we're going to reject technology. I don't I'm not saying that, but but that there's a longing for. I guess people are starting to realize it's not real. A lot of the relationships and the social interactions that you have. Um, and so, and I, and I wonder if that's an aspect of Ashburn as well, being uh, very tech oriented, that there's, there's kind of a, a little bit of a movement of, I need to put my phone away. It needs to be in my pocket more, um, and, uh, relate to people face to face more. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we, uh, I recently was invited to an uh, interesting conversation with church leaders, um, that were gathered around a table, a physical table, like in a physical space instead of virtually. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that kept on coming up in the conversation is the lack of the model of a table in today's culture. The family unit doesn't gather around the physical table for dinner every night, it's five days a week, seven days, a week, two days a week, not even one day a week in many households. Right. How do you see the church modeling that today, especially with all the social media um, is there a digital equivalent to the table that you think can happen? Um, what What are your thoughts on that? I um, so that, that's that's something I've been working on, and that's a challenge because we 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 also so Washington D.C. Metro has the the worst commute times of any metro in the entire country. Uh, the Wash posted a story on that a couple of years ago, and and basically people live in their cars. Um, and so alone, you, right? They live in a car they're alone. Car, they're not yeah. even carpooling. <laughs> That's right. You're five feet, 10 feet away from somebody surrounded by people, but yeah, you're alone. Um, and uh, uh, people have long commutes. They have challenging jobs. Uh, their availability for things like community and small groups and, and face to face is limited. And so we've, we've tried one of the, some of the things we try to do to, to break through that is that, I mean, we can't, we can't insist that the culture change in order to 
move to us. I mean, I, I think we need to take steps towards them. And, and you know, it, it, all of those things are headwinds that even Christians have to wrestle with that are just designed into our community. You know, so you can't just move in and, and throw all those shackles off. Um, and, but how can you adapt? And I think technology provides some of that. And so one of the things that we, we encourage people to do is that, okay, it, it's absolutely best if you could get together face to face with your small group once a week, that at least, I mean, that, that's the ideal. Um, and there's nothing better than face to face looking at somebody across the table, right? You can get a lot done in terms of communication. Um, but what if, um, you use those opportunities in the car, in the car to, to make more phone calls, you know? So, so what, one of the things I've encouraged guys to do is that, okay, on your commute, um, you guys are in the car at the same time. Use the technology that's available. Actually invest in high quality technology. In other words, a you know, really strong Bluetooth system, all the, everything you need so you could communicate with other people while you're driving. And even it, so, so you can't replace the face to face, but what if you called each other at 7.30 a.m. and spent 10 minutes just praying for one another and then hung up and you did that every day, you know, that, I mean, that, again, not as good as face to face, but add it up and it, you know, you're starting to take advantage and redeem some of the things that, that are available to you because you do have that time in the car and you do have technology that's available to you to make connections uh, like that. So that's something that we've encouraged. I'm not sure how well we've, you know, accomplished it yet, but that's kind of stuff we're working on. Uh, that is, uh, I think, um, I, I don't know, my heart's warmed because what you're saying is invest more in technology where some people will be have an allergic reaction. You're saying it to do it with purpose, not passivity, right? Mm -hmm. So let's use technology for good. Let's commandeer it and use it for our purposes in a way that exalts God and in our relationships with each other, um, but not take it as a passive don't be a victim of the technology, right? All right. Uh, steward it for good. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and so are you guys planning to invest further in um, podcasts and Facebook lives and other types of things of getting the message out? What about discipleship? Can you talk about that? How do you see technology yeah. aiding discipleship? Are there any, any things that you've been wrestling with that say, yes, this is something we're going to test out or this is what we're going to do? Uh, I, just along the lines of what I just said, um, in, 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 in spurring connections. So, yeah. um, you know, for us, we, uh, a big part of our discipleship is, is really taking the text that we're studying on Sundays and then in, in, in community really applying it. So, so how, okay, how's God speaking to me through his word? Um, what, what type of action do I need to take or, or thing I need to stop or, you know, and, and, and letting God's word really penetrate our hearts and to become not just hearers, but doers of the word as, as it says in James. Um, and then uh, to me, it's, it's, it's also then creating those connections within those small groups. So I, I, I you know, I, I think the power, the, the, the rubber hits the road for the church in community uh, in relationally. Um, and so what we try to do is encourage people in small groups to, Hey, let's connect, follow up with one another um, you know, to encourage. And then, you know, like, and like I said before, you know, technology allows you to follow up in ways that, that, you know, like using a Skype call during your lunch break or, um, uh, you know, a phone call during your commute, those, those kinds of things. Again, it can't replace the, you know, I'm trying to help guys to, to, to think beyond just because you can't physically get together right. doesn't mean you can't connect. And I'm not sure, I, I would never say that that face to face can ever be replaced. It can't be, but more of a lesser value thing, you know, we should use it. We should take advantage of it, you know? So um, that's the only kinds of things that we're doing right now along those lines. Being in Ashburn, Virginia, the heart of the internet, uh, people are very uh, aware of how they're building technology and working so hard at connecting device to device. And yeah, that's true. <laughs> and what you're doing is saying, hey, behind that device is a human being and right. people can connect with people and let's make most of that. Be intentional. Cool, that uh, technology and that opportunity, making great use yeah. of that. 
That's yeah. right. Uh, one, one last question. Uh, here's a wish. If you had a wish, what would you love technology to do for and with the Bible? We've, oh, we've already seen Bible technology develop to the point where you can have it at your fingertip. You can look up multiple translations. Yeah. But people can read it. But um, maybe it's a little bit flat and maybe people need a little more something to better engage it. Yeah, there's there's a lot of great technology for the Bible out there. Um, and, the, and the one thing I guess that comes to mind for me now is is y- you can you can there's a lot of tools out there and there's a lot of social tools with the Bible. But it'd be nice if there was also a, a church tool that in other words, you're, you're not just going to connect with all your Facebook friends or all your mm-hmm. friends across the world, but also to connect within my church community um, to build build the local community, not just a national or international community, but my local community. Um, that, that friend should matter a lot to me. <laughs> and, and Great. so that kind of tool would be, would be awesome. Thank you. That seed of an idea may uh, just build and build as we continue to have conversations here around future.bible because we're yeah. looking ahead and looking into the future of where the Bible can well, thank you so much, Richard, for spending your time with us today. Yeah, um, really appreciate it. I know as a church planter, it's not like you're uh, taking two-hour lunch breaks, going to the golf course every day or anything like that. <laughs> um, sowing the seed in Ashburn for the, the gospel, I think, is you know, roll up your sleeves work and really appreciate it. Love seeing from afar what you, what you guys have done so, so far to date. Um, if someone were listening in today and would love to get in touch with you directly, what's the best way that they could do that? Uh, they could, uh, yeah, so go to our website, harvest.bible. Um, my email is rich at harvest.bible. And, uh, yeah, no, I'd love to, to be able to connect, in particular if you live in the Ashburn area. Awesome. Well, everybody, thank you for listening to the Future.Bible podcast today. Um, DJ, thanks for being a co-host again today. Love the conversations that we're – curating here uh, what's one thing that you're looking forward to in a future episode dj is just to give a highlight and a tease for our listeners today well, we're, we're going to have more conversations about bible and technology so uh we're, we're looking to invite some of the uh newest technologies that are developing uh even those that are being developed behind the scenes so um we're looking at ones that are still incubating behind the scene and hope to give you some sneak peeks If you are one of those entrepreneurs or people that are investing in the intersection of the Bible and technology, we'd love to hear from you and talk with you on this show. You can get all the details at future.bible. And if you love this episode in particular, do us a favor. Could you head over to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and leave a review? It's the best way that you can help us tangibly to share Richard's story at harvest.bible further beyond with other enthusiasts and people who really support Um, everything that we are doing with technology and God's word. Um, I'm going to leave today with a modification, uh, Richard, of your uh, uh, focus um, or focus statement on your website. You said vertical focus, horizontal impact. Um, I love to frame it here that we have vertical focus and we're constantly searching for more digital impact with this show at Future.Bible. Thanks, Richard. Again, thanks you for uh, being with us today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's session, please help us share this podcast with your friends, colleagues, and family members. You can do that by leaving a review on iTunes or by sharing our website, www.future.bible with your network. Don't forget to join us next week for the next episode of the Future.Bible podcast.